class is in memory of Jared Orchen. Many years ago, when I was a Shiva student, I used to go every Friday afternoon in Israel to <coughs> Tel Aviv, to the old main bus station in Tel Aviv. Anybody remembers many years ago in Tel Aviv? And we used to stand up there, stand by tables, small tables, and offer Jews to put on film. Oh, thousands of people passing by. It was, it was really a lot of fun. Hot and this, it's for hours, for every Friday afternoon. One day, somebody calls me, come, come, we have a Jew, an American Jew doesn't speak Igbo, but he speaks Yiddish. And I was speaking Yiddish that I can communicate with them. Comes, he tells me in Yiddish, my parents, my father died, I need to say Akol Nidre. What he meant to say, he wanted to say Kaddish. Mm -hmm. But he didn't remember the word Kaddish, but he remembered the word <coughs> Kaddish. I told him, you mean Kaddish, right? He said, yeah, 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 Kaddish. He wants to say Kaddish. He, he had your side that day. Then we gathered 10 guys on the streets there, in a corner, and he said Kaddish. This idea of having 10 people to say, every Jew knows, you know, by Jewish people we pray with a minion. Minion is the most, one of the most, Sanctify things in Judaism, the most amazing inventions of Judaism. What is the source in the Torah for the concept of a minion? The first, there is a, Bib a Babylonian Talmud source and there is a Jerusalem Talmud source. The Babylonian Talmud source says from the Torah, we learn it from the story of the spies. Moses sent 12 spies to spy the land of Israel. They came back to Joshua and Caleb said, the land is a very good land. Ten <coughs> said, no, we will not be able to go. It's too hard. They will fight us. They are stronger than us. It's not going to work. God was upset with the ten. And what how he calls them, he says, for how long this congregation, this evil congregation will make me upset. Evil congregation. Because God called the ten men, a congregation, we know from there that the congregation is there. That's source number one. Not such a good place to learn a minion from, from an evil congregation, but that's a congregation. The second place is Jerusalem Talmud brings from the story of the selling of Joseph. They sold, the brother sold Joseph, later they went to look for Joseph. Ten brothers went down to Egypt to look for, for, the, for Joseph. But the Torah, when the Torah mentions the ten, the Torah says, the, ten bro the brothers of Joseph went down, Asara, ten. Why the Torah points out that's ten? We know Joseph had ten brothers who went down. Joseph was number 11. Benjamin stood it, stayed with his father, right? Obviously, that's ten. Why the Torah points out the number ten? The Talmud says, because 10, they believe that with the power of 10, they will have more success to find Joseph. That was a part of the agenda. That the second source for the concept of 10 people as a minion, as a group, as more power. The third place in the Torah we find the concept of 10 is Davis, Sodom and Gomorrah. When, when, when Abraham was arguing with God, to save Sodom and Gomorrah. God told them that's an evil place, I want to destroy it. He started to negotiate with about, about 50 people. Couldn't find 50, he said 45, 40, 30, 20, 10. I went down to number 10, because he said if there is no 10, we cannot save the place. We're not going to the details, 50, because it was five cities, that he wanted 10 for each city. 40, he said maybe we'll save only four cities. Couldn't find 10. Then 10, we know from this, the 10, that's a third source, that 10 is the number, the magical number that makes, makes, makes it into a congregation, makes it into something more powerful than just an individual. Nine, it's still nine individuals. 10, they're not individuals anymore. It's a group. It's a community. It's a congregation. But where we find the concept of that's with 10 people. Where the whole concept of 10, the number 10 came from? Where in the Torah we find the number 10? Uh, 10. 
Ten Commandments. Ten that statements. Comes to, uh, the, the, the first one, Ten Commandments, that comes to mind, as you're going to learn in two weeks, or three weeks, two weeks. In Pasha Jethro, we read about the Ten Commandments. God chose to give us the law in ten. He could give us in nine, give us in eleven, tell us one more commandment, don't be a nudnik. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be a, an extra commandment. You can find, why ten? Obviously, God wanted ten. The other place we see ten is in this parashas, the ten plagues. God could give nine plagues, give eleven plagues, could give one plague and wipe out all Egypt. <clears throat> God chose to operate by the number 10. And all of this, why this number 10? Because there is something 10 that not, very, not too many people know. When God created the world, how God created the world? What he did? He spoke, he said, he said, and God said, let there be light. It's called 10 utterances, 10 statements. The last one is, let, the, let, us, okay. let us make men. Nice heard them. Elohim, and God said, and God, every time it's written, God said, it's an audience. God chose to create the world in 10 statements. That's how he created the world. So, what happened is, then when God created the world, something very important for us to remember. God didn't create the world once and retire to Florida. God is constantly creating the world. When God says, let there be light, is the light, God is constantly recreating the world every second. That the Jewish belief. For example, you know, you know the inflatable? Inflatables. You don't have to destroy an inflatable. You pull it out from the plug, it disappears. The whole thing collapses. God does not need, so to speak, he created the world. He will need to destroy the world with tractors. The moment he pulls the plug, the whole thing will disappear. God is constantly creating the world. That's a part of Jewish belief. And that's why God is not, many people believe that God is the creator of the world, but not necessarily runs the world, runs the show. But if you understand it, what means creator of the world? C creating. We say it in the prayers every morning. One who renews the creation every day. Not every day, every moment. God is renewing the, the creation, the first creation of the world. That's why every week, of every week we said Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, God created the world in seven days. We don't count day number eight. We count the day number one, number two, first day, second day. Again, every week is a seven day of creation. Then God created the world in 10 utterances. But what happened during the history? People forgot that God is the creator of the world. As you're going to speak about it maybe next week, God created the world. I mean, people started to say, oh, we have to say thank you to the sun for doing for us such a good job. And that, we know that the God runs the sun, created the sun. But if to, we'll also say thank you, you know, thank you, tell you, say thank you to the waiters who gives you the food. Even, you know, the waiters is just a worker. Yeah. But you say thank you to him. We'll say thank you to the sun, to the moon. And little by little, God forgot about, people forgot about the creator of the universe. Then when God wanted to come back to the world, many, many years after the creation, how many years after the creation was there was the giving of the Torah? 3, no, that's 3,300 is now, from now. 2,400. Huh? 2,400. Then the, the God wanted to give the Torah to humanity, but everybody forgot that there is a God. That to remind humanity about the 10 utterances, he made the templates to break the idols, to wake up the world 10 times. They should remember what is written about Egypt, and Egypt should know that there is a God. And you should know that there is a God, knowing that there is a God. When he cleaned up the stupidity of the idol worshiping, it was place for the Ten Commandments. Then it starts with the Ten utterances. Then to wake up, bring the world back to a state of believing in God, you needed the Ten Plagues. 
And it, and it ended, so to speak, with the Ten Commandments. That every time we have a minion, it's a way to remember the Ten Commandments. Remember the Ten Commandments? Remember that God created the world and basically the two most important things. When we, what, is the, what is Shabbat representing? We say in the Kiddush, for the Shabbat, we say, Zecher lemaaseh bereshit, remembering the, crea the creation of the, of the world, and Zecher leitziat mitzrayim, remembering the exodus from Egypt. Two things. That's what the minion is all about. Remember, reminding us the two most important things, the creation of the world and the giving of the Torah. And there is another thing in them. You know, we read the Torah in the synagogue, Saturday morning, that's the old parsha. But then we read the Torah Mondays and Thursdays, every Monday and every Thursday. Why we read the Torah every Monday and every Thursday? Because the Jewish people should not be going without three days, three days without learning Torah. Based on a verse in the Bible that the Jews went three days without water and they complained to God. A human being cannot survive without water for three days. That's why Jewish people also, the Torah is compared to water, that you cannot survive without it. Then we, we, every three days we read from the Torah. Why it's Mondays and Thursdays, it's a lot of story because Moses went up the last time for 40 days. He went up on, a, on a Thursday, I think he came down on a Monday. It's two days who are more merciful to the Jewish people. God is accepting more, is a more, a more merciful mood than the rest of the week. Therefore, if we read the Torah, we read it on these days. This was one tradition that was because those were market days. Were those market days because Moses came down on those days? I know, I don't think so. Okay. I think the market days were not set up because Moses came out. And the, it was the market days were not set up by the Jews. You know what I'm saying? In any case, but on these days, also on Shabbat afternoon, Mincha service, we read again the Torah. We read three alias. We call up for three people. And the minimum amount of verses that we have to read in, in, in this short reading, the shortest reading could be altogether 10 verses. It must be 10. And the Talmud says, why 10? Two opinions. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> One is to remind us, but the two opinions are basically the same idea. One is to remind us the Ten Commandments. That's Rabbi Yosef says. Rabbi Yochanan says to remind us the Ten, the ten utterances. Again, end in end. There was a Jew, a Holocaust survivor. His name was Abba Kubner. He was a leader. He was in Israel. He was a, he was a poet and a writer. And he came to Israel. He says he, he writes in his memoirs. He came to Israel. He came to visit the wall. It was in 19, before 1948. So he stood in front of the wall, and he didn't feel any connection. He feels like it's a wall, the, the Western Wall in Jerusalem. And he says he was standing there, and he was like, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't connect. Suddenly, somebody pulls pulls him by his sleeves and tells him, "Would you mind to join us for the minion?" They needed him for that number ten. Put on a kippah on his head, and he almost came. And he says, in one moment, he felt connected. He said it saved him. Jewishly, it saved him. He suddenly realized that in the Jewish people, the community, it's all, it's all about. You can be, no, it doesn't make a difference who you are. Count to the minion. That's what it's all about. It's all the invention of community praying together. That's the power of the Jewish people. That's what kept the Jewish people going together. Which are the key prayers that require a minion? Every Amida, in general. Every time a service means a midah, and every there is a midah, you have to have 10 people. But there is something more about 10 Jews. When we say the, uh, the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, Rebbe Shneur Zalman of Liadi, writes in his book, in Titania, it's the Bible of, of Hasidus, it's called. He writes there, I heard from my teachers that when 10 Jews come together in one room, the Shechina, the Divine Present, is stronger, is very strong. The presence of God, the energy, the spiritual energy is very big there. It's not, it's not to do with prayers. Ten Jews in one room, ten babies in one room. They bring together, there is already ten Jewish, because there is ten Jewish souls, there is an energy that's there, it says, what type of energy? 
that even angels cannot survive it. That's how much energy is in the room. That's why it's so important not only to pray with a minion, to learn Torah in a group. A person can say, oh, I will go on online, I'll learn Torah on my own. It doesn't come to the power, to the connection with God that we have, that we have 10 people in the same room. The level of spirituality and energy is much bigger. Maybe that's why religious Jews have 10 children. They want to have a minion in their own house every day. <laughs> I can tell you that there is a lot of energy going on there. Yeah, but you're sure. And, and there is one more thing. When two people meet together, what do they do? When you, when, you, when you meet another person and you want to introduce yourself, you shake your hand. Every hand has five fingers. Together, it's a two tablets, like two tablets. And two people shake their hand. What they remind each other about the Ten Commandments and the Ten Utterances. Then God created the whole system in ten. And one thing reminds the other. The fingers remind you about the Ten Commandments, the dominion. It's all about a reminder all the way to the creation of the universe. 